there's been a lot of talk about this movie, and there's been a lot of great talk about this movie. However, there's been some talk, although likely well-intentioned, has been a little bit inaccurate. All right, today we're talking about the movie whose release date I put on my calendar over a year ago. It's not Barbie, it's Oppenheimer. I don't go see very many movies in theaters. It's expensive. I have a kid. It's a little time consuming to go to the movie theaters, but this movie checks every single box or something I want to see in a theater. It's World War II era. It's science in the atomic era. Absolutely stacked cast. Incredible director. Incredible cinematographer. This is a movie that I definitely want to go see in the theaters. I shouldn't say but, but there's been a lot of talk about this movie and there's been a lot of great talk about this movie. However, there's been some talk, while though likely well-intentioned, has been a little bit inaccurate. And so I waited, I kind of debated on should I make this video or not. It's not exactly where I want this channel going, but my like my deep-seated passion is education. I've held like education positions for the last like 10 years. So for me, this is a chance for me as kind of like an outlet to provide some education in a field that I deeply enjoy. So without further ado, let's talk about what is the right way to experience Oppenheimer because I think it's a lot easier than you think it is. Okay, so what is the right way to experience Oppenheimer? And I specifically use experience Oppenheimer because I think that's exactly what Nolan meant for this film to be. It's meant to be experience. So here, listen to this. There's such controversy around it because they didn't tell anyone. In 2021, they've got some of the top filmmakers in the world. They've got some of the biggest stars in the world who have worked for years in some cases on these projects very close to their hearts that are meant to be, you know, big screen experiences. They're meant to be out there for the widest possible audiences, the, the sort of uh, A release. Uh. Big screen experiences. Hold on to that phrase for just a second. That, what you just listened to, that was Christopher Nolan and John David Washington in an interview kind of discussing their frustrations around the release of Nolan's previous film, Tenet. Now, Tenet was released in theaters the same exact day it was released on HBO Max. Or I guess a better way to say that is it was released on HBO Max the same day it was released in theaters. Now, there's a whole backstory about that. They never, the studio never talked to anyone about that. They just kind of made that last minute decision without discussing with Nolan or anyone else. So there's a lot of frustration and all backstory there. But the, the main thing is that no one's going to make, or any director is going to make a film to be experienced. But I think Nolan has this, Christopher Nolan has this kind of accidental notoriety for, for wanting his films to be experienced. Like, I think the catchphrase is like, in the most immersive way possible or whatever. But I think he, he did an interview in 2020 with IndieWire that I, I think debunks that a little bit here. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna read this paragraph to you. Well, do you have a problem with people seeing Dunkirk on your phone or whatever? No, I do not. But the reason I don't is because it's put into these big theaters as its primary form, its initial distribution. And the experience trickles down to the extent where if you have an iPad and you're watching a movie, you carry with you the knowledge and your understanding of what that cinematic experience would be, and you extrapolate that. So when you watch a TV show on your iPad, your brain is in a completely different mindset. I think the key phrase there is right, comes right at the end. Your brain is in a completely different mindset. I don't know about you, but I have a five-year-old, and most of the movies that I watch happen to be at home. Typically, after my kid goes to bed, we sit and watch a movie at night. But watching a movie at home it's completely different. Watching a movie with kids is completely different. There's stuff going around in my house. My phone is there. There's a kitchen that needs to be cleaned. You know, like, it's hard for me to sit and become immersed, especially when I'm just dealing with, like, you know, subpar speakers and, like, you know, just, like, your average TV screen or just, like, watching something on a laptop. It's much harder for me to become immersed than when I, like, go to a theater, sit in a seat in a dark room with my phone turned off, with the sole purpose of experiencing a movie. All that to say, Nolan shot Oppenheimer on 70 millimeter IMAX film for him to be able to create the most immersive, peripheral, filling, 18K resolution movie experience possible. However, the bottom line is that this film was created for you to experience in a movie theater. So I think, the, the, the punchline here that we're trying to get to is the right way to see Oppenheimer for now 
is inside of a movie theater. It doesn't matter if it's in 70 millimeter IMAX film or standard 70 millimeter film or digital IMAX or just your standard regal cinema down the street. The point is go to a movie theater, turn off your phone, grab some popcorn and just sit and watch the movie with no distractions. That's the point. Forget about all the formatting issues, all, all of this other talk that's been happening. Forget about it. Just go to a theater and see the movie. Okay, but there's still all this talk about the format options available for watching Oppenheimer. You got your 70 millimeter IMAX, your standard 70 millimeter digital IMAX, tons of format options. Let's break those down, starting with IMAX. IMAX is a proprietary system of capture and display options, boasting its own lineup of cameras, projectors, and screens. The cameras are absolutely enormous and very loud. The projectors are the size of a Toyota Corolla, and the screens are upwards of 70 feet tall, and they're a super bright proprietary system. There's a lot happening with IMAX, and it's very, very confusing. Historically, IMAX has been reserved for shooting short documentaries for two reasons. The big one is cost. Using their expensive and very rare cameras coupled with the expensive and also rare 70 millimeter IMAX film is cost prohibitive for most productions. The second being noise. The cameras are incredibly loud. Just listen to these clips. Fun fact, in 1998, a team drug the absolutely gargantuan IMAX film cameras to the summit of Mount Everest to shoot 1998's Everest. All right, so prior to 2008, IMAX revolved around the 70 millimeter IMAX film that has an aspect ratio of 1.43 to 1. However, in 2008, the IMAX Corporation introduced digital IMAX that has a slightly wider ratio of 1.9 to 1. Now, this wider aspect ratio was to help get more IMAX screens up by retrofitting existing multiplex cinemas. Okay, so what is 70 millimeter IMAX film and what is the difference between that and regular 70 millimeter film? Well, here we've got two figures representing 70 millimeter IMAX and standard 70 millimeter film. Now, if you look, it's pretty obvious that the 70 millimeter IMAX film is significantly larger than the standard 70 millimeter film, but just how much larger? Well, it's three times larger. So if we take that blue square and we move it into the orange square and then we add two more blue squares and then who thought to do this, we turn them on their side, you'll see that 70 millimeter film is a third the size of 70 millimeter IMAX. All right, so great. So 70 millimeter IMAX film is three times larger than the standard 70 millimeter film. But what does that mean? Well, there's kind of a little conundrum because 70 millimeter IMAX can only be seen in 30 theaters in the entire world. So unless you live close to one of those theaters or you're extremely dedicated, willing to travel, you're not going to be seeing Oppenheimer in 70 millimeter IMAX. So what exactly does that mean? Well, we need to make a clarifying point first. Oppenheimer is not going to be shot entirely in 70 millimeter IMAX film. Why? Because those cameras are too stinking loud. So the dialogue scenes are going to be shot in a slightly different format than the rest of the film. We don't exactly know how much that's going to be because we haven't seen the film and they haven't released any numbers. But if you want to read a little bit more about Christopher Nolan talking about that, there's a link for an article, an exclusive interview with the Associate Press that he did kind of talking a little bit more about this. So what exactly is that aspect ratio change going to look like if you don't go see Oppenheimer in 70 millimeter IMAX? Well, let's look at these images. Okay, if this is your 70 millimeter IMAX and 1.43 to 1, this blue square in the center is what the 70 millimeter standard looks like at 2.20 to 1. So you're going to lose that orange bar at the top and bottom. Furthermore, if you do digital IMAX, you're going to lose slightly less, but you're still losing some image on the top and bottom. But Christopher Nolan and his director of photography, Hoyte von Hoytema, keep these aspect ratio changes in mind when they're shooting their films, and they develop this process that they call center punching the action. You can read more about that in this AP article that I mentioned earlier. Basically, it means that you can go see Oppenheimer in any format, and it's still going to be sensible, even though you're not watching it in the 70 millimeter IMAX film. This video here put out by IMAX when they released Avengers Infinity War kind of shows what that looks like when you're losing the top and the bottom of the frame. So that's what we use. So again, what this all comes down to is just go to a theater and see the movie. If you can see it in the 70 millimeter IMAX film, great. If you go see it in standard 70 millimeter film, great. 
However you can see this movie, go experience it, go enjoy it in theaters. Silence your phone, sit in a comfy seat, look at a big screen, enjoy this movie inside of a movie theater. It's gonna be a spectacular movie. The cast is stacked, it's a Nolan movie. Just go see it in theaters. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I know it's a lot. I know there's a ton of videos on Oppenheimer. So thank you for taking the time to watch this one. It's 2023. If you like the video, you know what to do. And we'll see you next week.